Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this, our fourth of the Learn From The Pros series on Adobe After Effects, we are talking about layers. You can think of all layers as a container. They just contain information and values and properties. And we're gonna dive into all of that in this video. If you've been following along in this series, we've already walked through the interface, we've talked about compositions, so we're just getting more and more specific to hopefully build up to where you can start making some cool stuff in here. It's almost like we're kind of layering on information with every video. And since I've made a terrible pun, it's time to get into it. The first type of layer I wanna talk about is the footage layer. Any footage you've imported into your project can be brought onto the composition window or onto the timeline to create a footage layer. Now, all layers have very similar properties. If you click this little arrow here, you can twirl down and you can twirl into all of the properties of a layer. But we'll talk more about those things later. For now, it's important to remember that all layers are similar in two ways. They all have pretty much the same properties as a baseline, and they're all containers of information. This layer from mountains.jpg happens to be holding an instance of mountains.jpg. Here on the composition, I can modify it, move it around, I can duplicate the layer, I can make more copies of it. We duplicate by selecting a layer, hitting Command or Control D. We can also just copy and paste them like we do in other applications, Command or Control C and then V. And I can modify things about these layers, but none of that will affect the original source that they are referencing. However, if mountains.jpg is changed somewhere, all of these will be updated and changed. Now, we can also put a comp in a comp. So if we have a composition in our project space, we can treat it like footage and just drag it out and we can duplicate that, drag it around, make many, many copies. All these layers are simply referencing one original. So if I were to double click on these, go into that original and start modifying something about it, maybe I change the color here of this border. When I go back into that first comp, into the example composition, you'll notice that all of these have updated. I changed the original and all these instances that reference it have now updated as well. But there are layers that can live completely inside a composition and won't be bothered by any of that stuff. So I'm just gonna clear these out, make this one a little bit bigger, serve as a background. And now let's talk about the text layer. Text layers you can create by right-clicking down here in your timeline and going new text, or you can always right-click in the comp out here, new text layer, or of course you can go layer new and then call them up here. And there are keyboard shortcuts for making all of these layers very quickly. Another way you can create text layers is simply by clicking on the text tool and then clicking where you want the text to appear. And you just start typing. When you're happy with your text, you just click away somewhere or you hit enter over on the far side of your keyboard. And now you've got this lovely text, which you can modify using the character window or the paragraph window if you have them open. But you'll notice that creating this text layer hasn't created anything in our project. This doesn't reference anything. And of course you can twirl into it and you can see it has the same transform properties, but it has brand new interesting text properties. Another layer that's very similar is the shape layer. We can make a new empty one in the same way that we would have made the text layer, calling up any of those menus or using the tool up here, such as the ellipse tool or the pen tool to simply click, make sure you have nothing selected, and then start dragging out and drawing your shapes. Shape layers are very similar to text layers in that they have the same transform information and they just happen to be full of vector information, fills, strokes, and again, more transform tools we could spend forever on the shape layer. If you need to make simple shapes, this is a great way to do it. But similar to the text layer, nothing has been created in the project panel. These live entirely in the composition and there's no referencing going on. There are some layers that we make in the comp that do create their own references. Those are the shape adjustment and null layers. Again, to make those, you can just go new solid. This will open up a dialog box. You choose their size, their pixel aspect ratio. Usually you'll be hitting the make comp size button to create solids that are the exact same size as the composition. When you do, you'll notice you've just created a nice big rectangle. And After Effects has made a folder named solids and filled it with that white solid that we just made. Solids are often used to hold effects or to be used as mats. For now though, it's important to know that you can create these layers and they can hold more information if you want to put them there. You could, for example, draw a circular mask and now you've created 
another kind of circles, another way to put geometry out into your compositions. Now that other type of layer we talked about, the adjustment layer, you'll notice when you create one of these, it has made a new adjustment layer solid over here, but it doesn't look like anything right now. Did we just create nothing? What are we doing? An adjustment layer behaves differently. It's very similar to the solid, but you'll notice if you have your switches and modes on that we've got this little tab here activated. This means that layer is an adjustment layer. When you click on it, it behaves exactly the same as a solid. So having this on makes it behave as an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers are good for storing effects on them. So I'm gonna take an effect, I'm gonna apply it to that adjustment layer, and I'm putting a curves adjustment on here. And notice when I start messing with this curve, everything below the adjustment layer is changing. Well, really, just our view of it is changing. You can think of an adjustment layer like a filter. When we look through the adjustment layer, down through the adjustment layer, every layer under it is being affected by that adjustment layer. Anything that we move to be above that adjustment layer is no longer going to be affected by it. So the layer order is important here. Things towards the top are on top, things towards the bottom are on the bottom. And especially with the adjustment layer, you can see as things move from below to above that they're being affected by that curves adjustment. For now, it's important to remember that all the layers are a little bit different in what they do, and some of them are creating references here in the project panel. If we were to delete the solids folder and everything in it, all of those wonderful solids that we made will go away. And if we modified them, they would change in unexpected ways. Now, there are a bunch of other layers, such as null layers and cameras and lighting, but all of that can come later. For now, if you understand these basic properties of layers, what they do, how they work, then you're gonna be in good shape and we can build on it from there. The next video in this series is gonna talk about actually animating things on the timeline. So we're gonna just be layering on more information, getting deeper and denser with this stuff, and I hope you come along for the ride.